Hey guys, it's Vicky's Anime. I've been gone a way too long, but lately I've been reading lots of Manawa and wanted to share the top 10 I've been reading this week. I would love to hear what Manawa or manga you have been reading or which anime you've been watching. And if you're reading some of the Manawas I'm reading, I would love to hear your thoughts on them in the comments below. Let's get started. We'll be going over 10 romance manawas today. I love romance and so that's usually what I read and I've recommended each one. But we'll start with the two bonus ones since they're recently completed and I have thoughts. The first bonus manawa is Adeline's Darkest Night. This is a I died and got brought back to the past and now I'll change the future type of manawa. The last thing Adeline remembers is being killed by her husband, who is an angel. Now she wants to change the future, find out why her husband killed her, and kill the demons to help the angels go back to heaven. It's kind of interesting. I think it would be a good binge. It wasn't fun waiting each week for it to come out. Um, it's a only if nothing else to read. You guys should read it. This is our second bonus manawa because it finished recently. It's called Kneel Before Me. Our protagonist is Lady Kyrie. She somehow wakes a person entity called The End. The End is an overpowered character that can't die and is cr incredibly threatening. Honestly, I thought this would be a better romance story. The beginning was really strong, but it fell apart in the end. I don't recommend it. I just wanted to tell you my thoughts. Finally, we're starting with number 10, Romance in, ooh, I'm going to butcher this, Sorable. This is a completed manga, Romance in Sorabeo is an isekai. So Young dies in the modern world and shows up in the past in the Silla dynasty. She has blonde hair, which they are prejudiced against, so she has to hide it. She wants to go back to her modern life, but she keeps bumping into the romantic interest. She forgets all she forgets about trying going back to the future, lol. <laughs> the story finally is completed and it's pretty short. Good to hurry and binge. I think the end was really rushed. So I would give it a recommend since now you can binge it. Um, number nine, may God bless your demise. This one I'm getting into. It caught my attention, then lost it, and now it's back again. NJ lives on Cullion Island and is selected to be a companion to Kylik, the heir of the Duke of Blackwell. She will learn the Blackwell secrets. Not gonna lie, it tells the secrets really fast and that was the point that interested me. Now it's still interesting as it's ongoing, but I can see it going either way. Number eight, protecting the witch's son. There once was a witch feared by many, but for Elaine, she was a savior when she had no one else. Elaine grew up under the care of this mysterious witch, learning swordsmanship and becoming her protector. The witch marries a king and has a son, the new prince. Elaine protects the witch and her new family, but after a tragedy, she wakes up 20 years in the future with the witch's heart beating in her chest. Now she has to find the son and protect him, thus protecting the witch's son. Honestly, it's a slow romance, but I haven't been enjoying it. I think once it's complete, it'll be a great binge. Number 7, The Redemption of Earl Nottingham. This is another I died, got brought back to the past, and now I'll change the future. Madeline is married to the Duke, who was left broken and scarred after the war. He then turned her life into hell. She tried to flee, but ended up dying. She then wakes up, and she's 17 again, before the war, before she's married. How can Madeline change her fate? This one has been pretty fun read so far, isn't too slow or too fast, and the art is done so well. I'm not usually into the 1800s, early 1900s era setting, but so far it makes sense why it was set there. Honestly, it makes the story better. I have high hopes this one won't bore me. Number six, the Duke's fake sister. Grizz was living in a brothel when she was offered to pretend to be the daughter of a Duke's family. The daughter went missing as a child and Grizz looks just like her. She joins the Duke's family and her new brother showers her in gifts and wants her for himself. I love the tension in the story between Grizz and all the other characters. The art is super interesting and I love how the artist draws the dresses. Number five, Betrayal of Dignity. Chloe is an independent woman who has a really bad limp and has to use a cane. Um, a duke 
forces her to marry him. Does she fall in love? Does she find the Duke's secrets? It's kind of like a mystery. It's kind of a obsession romance, which is really like I really like it. Um, I love the art with the story. I also really enjoy the story plot line, which I didn't think I would. It isn't too fast or too slow. It keeps me on the edge of my seat. I'm always excited to see there's a new chapter. Number four, The Remarried Empress. This series has been going for a while, so there's lots to read. Navia is currently the Empress of the East Kingdom for as long as she can remember. She was engaged to the prince and raised to be an empress. Everything changed when her husband, the emperor, brings home a mistress and demands for a divorce. She agrees, gets divorced, and a twist I loved, agrees to marry the prince of the West Kingdom and becomes the empress of the West Kingdom, retaining her title and status. I love the fantasy romance and the story between all the characters. Whenever I finish chapter, I pray the next one will be out soon. Number three, Marriage of Convenience. It's another I died and got brought back to the past and now I'll change the future. Bianca was a dumb countess or a wicked countess while her husband Count Zachary risked his life on the battlefield. One day Bianca dies and she prays for a second chance. And what do you know? She comes back to life and she doesn't choose the bad choices. <laughs> right? I actually love the art style, the story, the romance, the politics. It kept me on the edge of my seat. It's technically completed, but right now there's epilogues coming out and I, I've just been loving them. Number two, I've become a true villainess. This is a true isekai where MC is reincarnated as a villain in a romance novel. MC wants to do right and not get killed in the end, but every time she gets away from the main plot line, it seems like the plot line can't get away from her. This story is actually really good and has different fantasy elements that other fantasy stories um, don't have. I always think I might get bored, but somehow always finds a way to pull me back in. I want to say a lot more about this one, but I, I don't want to spoil anything, so I really recommend this one. Number one, please take care of me in this life as well. This is a reincarnation Manawa, but instead of reincarnated in the past like other Manawas, this is a true reincarnation where she is reborn right after death. Um, but she remembers her past lives. Um, set in a modern South Korea, our MC lived 18 lives and can start remembering her past lives when she's about 10 years old. In her 18th life, she's part of a wealthy family but befriends a boy who's also part of a wealthy family. She ends up liking him, but on his birthday, they get into a car crash and she ends up saving him. But she dies. When her memory is awakened on her 19th life, she wants to go find the boy and see what happened to him. The story has lots of twists and turns that I love. It's technically completed, but I haven't f finished reading it yet. Um, I'm just binging it and loving it. I can't wait to see what happens next. Um, I hope the ending doesn't suck. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for hanging out with me. Let me know if you read any of the ones I've mentioned or if you have any Manoa mangas to recommend because I'm just binging and especially if it's romance, but I'll read anything. Anyways, I'll see you guys next time. Bye! -bye.